Welcome to the Black Hills Small Business Podcast. I'm Tristan Eamon with Mindful Living Realty. And I'm Angela Dale with Gateway Mortgage. Join us as we sit down with Black Hills small business owners, learn about their businesses, and tell their stories. We're doing it now on the Black Hills Small Business Podcast. All right, well, thanks, Scott, for joining us here on the uh, Black Hills Small Business Podcast. This is our first episode, so I wanted to find someone that I knew. And I was just trying to think about this the other day. When did Emily start guitar lessons? I mean, that must have been... Was she like fourth grade, nine or 10? She was nine, yeah. So wow. she was nine. So she's 19 today. So she, she was doing guitar lessons for nine, nine, yeah. 10 years. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Close. Yeah. Yeah, well, she crazy. might have even been eight. I think she was eight because I was still teaching her when she was 18. Yeah. And we had hit that 10 year mark. Right, right. And she, that yeah, was back in the day point. when she was going to be the next Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Until we realized that she couldn't sing. So. <laughs> <laughs> true story. Sorry, true story. Yeah, she knows that. Okay. She knows that. So, but anyway, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Please uh, start out with telling us uh, who you are, uh, what your business is. Yeah. Um, my name is Scott Miller, uh, Jr. I run a uh, recording studio. We do private lessons. We also have um, a program called Rock School that is above my head um, <laughs> that we do that is just a band program put together for uh, kids roughly aging from eight to 18, but running through teaching them how to uh, play in bands together. It's a little bit different dynamic than uh, what you would have with just private lessons, just playing in your bedroom. Um, so that was kind of the aspect that we were trying to corner was not everybody knows how to play in a group with people. And you run into a lot of pitfalls that like I had to learn uh, growing up just playing in bands and other people have to learn as well. And so we kind of thought if we could give somebody a, a safe environment to learn that kind of stuff and learn like, okay, I don't like playing with people who play this style of music or I don't like doing this or it, it was just a little easier. You could interchange things and, you know, mix people around. But so we do that, um, like I said, along with the professional recording studio, um, some side hustle video work, but yeah, Pretty much anything that has to do with uh, music capturing or learning, we can, yeah, we kind of try to take care of, so. We have been, a brick and mortar studio has been in existence since 2009. We started uh, in a different building over on 8th Street uh, with a different name. We were called uh, Fire Station 7 Recording. I got sick of people coming in and asking like for dinner reservations for where they're, you know, when, when am I going to be seated? And I was like, this is not the firehouse. That is a couple of blocks around the corner. Um, and so we started that and then rock school has been, this is going to be our 21st year running it. So that, that, uh, originally started at Haggerty's. My dad started that when, yeah, I would have been like 10 years old, 11 years old, somewhere in there. And so started that at Haggerty's and then that eventually moved down to the studio as well. Um, but I was the one who, instead of going to college, I opened up a brick and mortar studio and decided that playing guitar was a good idea uh, for a life goal. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you're happy, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. second. <laughs> Third, third son Isaiah, he was doing voice lessons with your dad, mm -hmm. yep. and uh, now he really enjoyed, or we enjoyed listening to him in rock school. He had a good time yeah. through that whole, you know, four years of doing doing rock school. Yeah, uh, and I think the last performance that he did was really cool. He kind of all of a sudden opened up. Yeah, just he kind of really just kind of really came into his own a little bit. And it was really cool to see. It is, and that's one of the. I think that's one of the parts that we like about the program in general is that you find kids that maybe are in a shell and there isn't always a, a great alternative to let a lot of that energy out. And so when they're able to find that, that's a, that's a cool thing to get to yeah, see. Especially when, you know, high school choirs. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, yeah. So you have, do you have any, uh, like a known bands that you have done? Um, as far as recording stuff, I've done a lot of my friends bands around, um, I've done some work with like Judd Hoos, um, uh, some video stuff. We did a full live session, um, uh, filming and recording. 
Um, not a ton of like, you know, there, there isn't any big name band that's run through, um, as far as that stuff goes, we really end up catering a lot to, uh, people who a lot of times just want to record stuff for posterity. They don't want their family to forget that they, you know, could sing and play guitar and stuff like that. So that's a cool thing to be able to put namesakes, um, for people. Um, local. yeah, yeah. Very local. Um, I've, I just finished an audio book. So a lot of different things, like I said, kind of anything that gets, anything that needs to be recorded, um, we kind of end up doing. Well, and that's a different take in regards to what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, the audio books and things like that. And like, so the religion, things like that. So that's a whole new outlet. A new outlet yeah. Yeah. A whole, yeah. A whole lot of different stuff that, um, we've done commercials. We've done, uh, we did an episode of Chicago Fire. I don't know if that show's still on the air, but uh, we did uh, ADR for that. Um, and I'm trying to think of other. We did subway ads. So if you were in New York City in like 2013, you would have heard <laughs> subway ads that we did. Um, yep, stuff like that. So yeah, it's kind of, there's a, a vast number of weird things that you end up kind of getting into when you're, you know, yeah. when you're in this business. So. Well, yeah, so there's a couple different avenues to look at other than just thinking, okay, I have, you know, just to come in for, yep. I thought, I thought Tristan was doing vocal lessons, but he said he was doing drums. So. Yep, drum, yep. I want to hear him sing. <laughs> <laughs> <I> no. <know. laughs> so can you expand more about, I always like to hear the story. What, yeah. uh, what is the story about everything kind of starting up for you guys? How did, uh, how did that begin? Um, so it would have been, 2008 or so. I graduated in 2007. Um, I was playing in bands here and there, but there wasn't at the time like a real brick and mortar studio that people could come to. And my dad had had the studio open since I was like nine, eight or nine, something like that. He had kind of always been working in um, other studios and doing stuff. And then he just opened it up in our garage as kind of just a, a mini, not really fully professional, but not just home studio. So somewhere kind of in the middle there. So started from there, fast forward to 2009, I decided that I was gonna try to move everything that we did into one place downtown that we would be able to uh, actually get foot traffic and things like that. <clears throat> and the biggest thing, that we discovered is that you can't just be like a recording studio. You can't just teach guitar lessons. You can't just you can't just do one thing when it comes to arts here. It's you've got to diversify. So you've got to have multiple income streams, multiple things that you can uh, keep the boat afloat with, basically. <laughs> so it just kind of yeah, it slowly grew from there. Um, the old building was a lot smaller um, and we, you know, just slowly building uh, gear collection, guitars, amps, things like that. Um, like the Wurlitzer piano behind you guys is probably one of my favorite pieces of gear that I just, some guy gave it to me because it was sitting in his garage for too long, you know. So things like that, but um, yeah, it's just, I, I, wasn't really good at a whole lot of other stuff and I'm not even that great at playing guitar, but I, I have a passion for teaching and, uh, being able to connect with kids on a level that most, um, whether it's, uh, traditional music within school or just traditional instruments. Um, we have a flute teacher here. We have a piano teacher here. We have got a lot of other things, but there's something about, guitar and drums and bass and other things like that, that kind of get left out in this idea of it being like a, a good use of your time. It's kind of like, Oh, what are you going to do with that? You know? And so I've always tried to encourage the kids that are very passionate about it or even just really enjoy playing it and are never going to be that good. But that's not the point. The point is to not turn out, you know, how many kids do I have at Juilliard? How many kids do I have, you know, this and this? It's how many kids are happy? How many kids see me 10 years after stopping lessons and going, 
oh, hey, what's up? You know, you know, I, I still I play all the time. Like yeah, yep. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. I see uh, when I drop my son off at school, I'll see parents that I used to have five years ago and they're like, oh yeah, my daughter's in, you know, she's a senior, she just graduated, still plays guitar every day, you know, right yeah, now. that kind of stuff. So that really ends up being the point um, for me at least. Nice. Well, it's like you were saying, Isaiah kind of broke out of the shell at that time. So I think it is, you know, it's that stuff that, that they're passionate about. Yeah. So how young do you start lessons at? Um, I try to start it somewhere in the realm of eight, nine years old. I have a new group of kids that totally broke that for me. And um, and it's, it's fun. Really, it comes down to like can they physically play a guitar most of the time? <laughs> um, but even then, it, if they can't, it becomes like a music, uh, just a music, not theory, but I guess music education class, you know, young music education class kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so eight or nine is, a, is, the, is the kind of good starting point. You can start playing piano at four, but that's because it's fairly simple to uh, press a key down. Yeah. Whereas the concept of piano to me is a lot harder versus guitar where it seems a little easier to understand guitar to a certain degree, but it's harder to play physically. Especially with big knobby fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, big knobby fingers would probably make it a lot easier on you. It's, <laughs> my little hands have always been a struggle for... <laughs> I tried for a while on that A thing that was just always yeah like, everything's oh, all cramped uh, together yeah, just, yeah I guess that does make sense then you just then you just smash it with one finger no. it's there's okay. always there's always a workaround there's always a yep there's yeah. always a workaround <laughs> <laughs> yeah my son's five foot or six foot five and he plays a lot but he's mm -hmm. saying he broke his hand and had trouble doing the yeah yeah, yeah there's, that, that way. there's definitely things I tore all the ligaments that hold my thumb to my hand when I was in freshman year high school. And I have a cast on for like seven months or something ridiculous like that, just way too long. And my hand atrophied way down and it was really tough to get it back. And I still have issues with like playing for really extended periods of time with my left hand, so. So other than being obviously living here and being grown up here, is there a reason why you chose, hey, let's just do, let's just do this in Rapid City? Partially because I didn't have a whole lot of drive to move, <laughs> but also there, there wasn't at the time a solid base where you could um, find arts things musically that were outside of like your normal, um, your normal routes. So you saw um, an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And there, there are more things now um, that exist, but you know, rock school is still the only organized um, band program. There's all over the country, there's School of Rock um, that popped up and we've been approached several times and we've always just said, you know, we're, we're not looking to franchise, we're just looking to keep doing what we do. Um, but it was, it was an opportunity and just trying to make sure that the arts don't completely uh, get erased uh, when I was in high school, you were seeing arts programs, music, photography, you know, kids practicing in hallways because the gym needed to be used for, you know, basketball practice, but the kids in band were, you know, stuck standing, yeah, in a hallway practicing somewhere. So that was always something that I didn't necessarily just want to jump ship and, and say, sorry guys, you know, good luck with, <laughs> good luck with anything artistic here. So. That was that was definitely a big drive too. Nice. So, how many rooms do you have set up that are for? Currently, here we have three separate um, private lesson rooms um, for the piano, uh, flute, and then kind of a miscellaneous one. We also have the large room, which doubles as the band rehearsal space, um, the recording studio, and can be used as another miscellaneous um, practice. Yep, yep, drums, yep, drums are taught there. Um, <laughs> we have the control room, which also doubles as a miscellaneous uh, uh, teaching room. So, yeah, roughly five, you know, uh, dedicated teaching rooms and some space that I can expand if I need to. Uh, so you've been obviously doing business here in Rapid City for a number of years. What is it that you love 
about Rapid City, Rapid Cityans, or what is it that you love being about being here? I think the thing that I love about being, especially like just generally in the Midwest, but in Rapid City, is the fact that there are a lot of people who do want to bring culture and other things and, and keep arts going. And even though it isn't a massive amount of people, there is a there's still that kind of like base of people that are pushing, whether it's theater. Um, my wife is really heavily involved with theater stuff and my son does theater and everything else. But all of those, um, all of those avenues kind of keep things for, you know, going. And just in general, I love the, the hills themselves. I'm a big outdoors guy, um, so hiking, backpacking, stuff like that. Like those are the things that I had a hard time justifying leaving. <laughs> um, one of my best friends is from New Jersey, and he came here on a just a his company shuttled him out to Black Hills Corp to see you know just to do a temp job. And he never left. You know the hills are so the hills are very captivating in in that respect. Um, but then, yeah, just the people. I've got a lot of friends that own businesses around town. I, I'm friends with uh, Jen and Michael, who own Black Hills Vinyl. Um, I love the comic book shops. Like the 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 culture and the kind of um, small town, big town feel that we get in downtown Rapid City is is kind of hard to capture anywhere else in that at You've least that from what i've thing. seen yep yeah, really got that local thing going yeah. yeah and it and it does end up being a, a community that does kind of keep track on everybody and you know when when if somebody's needing something the the you know the groups whether it's musicians like the uh downtown just flooded and uh uh, what is the vintage store? Decades, Decades yeah. completely flooded out and, and had a big issue with that. And they, uh, there's a show Saturday with a bunch of bands putting all the proceeds towards um, helping get her moved, I think. I think she's ending up gonna wanna not be in a basement anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's a really, there's a really cool group of people that even if you don't know everybody, it's pretty easy to kind of drop in and be like, hey, how's it going? You know, I work down here, I run this or I run that. And, and everybody's very uh, welcoming when it comes to that kind of stuff, so. And you do see a lot of like local bands that step up for these, you know, events. Mm -hmm. that oh yeah, the yep. So. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really great uh, musicians that, yeah, that kind of, uh, lend their talents and hands to all sorts of things so even when uh, i mean i got four kids so they've been through the entire high school system mm -hmm. middle school system and they were involved in a lot of band and i was always impressed with the, the strength of the band programs that we have yeah you know we've got a strong yeah. arts program in the schools which really help i think keep that keep that in there and keep that around in rapid city so. they do and the band teachers have always been oh, yeah. really great and they've always been very vicious in their way of like defending yep. that aspect of it when things like cuts or other things would come up they were and just finding unique ways of like funding things getting you know whether it's trying to get instruments or other things there's always been a a, a really strong set of teachers we appreciate you talking with us and yeah. uh, we really appreciate you hearing what you feel about the area and the neighborhoods. Yeah. I think people will really uh, appreciate that. So tell us how we, how can anybody get a hold of you? Uh, what yeah. Do we, uh, what do they do to touch base with you guys? Um, we have uh, an Instagram for both Rock School and the studio. Um, we also have uh, flatironrecording.com, um, bhrockschool.com. Uh, there's submission contact forms, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I, you know, the email is just flat iron recording at Gmail, BH Roxwell Gmail, you know, um, kind of the normal, we're pretty, we're fairly Googleable. Um, so. Right. Yep. Yep. Sounds good. I'll put all that information, of course, yep. in the show notes. So we'll, yeah. we'll, let, we'll keep that rolling. But yeah, anything else you want to mention that we haven't talked about? Nah, 
I think, yeah, I think we've covered most that I... Yeah. Have. Well, I have a question, because I was yeah. thinking I have an older gentleman that wanted to write a book, and that audio book is yeah. wonderful. But So I'm assuming that has to be pretty much done in a studio, correct? Uh, tech, I mean, if we get down to brass tacks on most things, almost anything nowadays can be done from a cell phone. So technically, there is there is no like uh, barrier for entry kind of thing anymore. But in order to get something that is yeah that is quiet that is it's got that buttery yeah there's the there's there's a there's always going to be a difference between like recording yourself your band anything in a bedroom versus a studio. That's really the only thing that that. Uh, that we have as a bargaining chip anymore is just the the actual facility that is built for it um and the i guess the quality and the amount of the amount of things we can do at one time yeah. well, so. i just think it's with him being older he's up in boulder canyon it's like mm -hmm. being able to to get down here and stuff yeah like, but it's nice to know that you know yeah technically yeah you could you could quite easily do it with uh yeah like a laptop and, and a microphone too but coming down here um there's no need to have any sort of technical prowess at all. You know, all you have to do is sit and talk. So, yeah, you can tell Tristan's videos were my, yeah. my videos <laughs> at my house and my poor lighting. And, <laughs> okay, no, yeah. I, I it's definitely you know something that I wasn't aware of or yeah. all the options that you have. Yeah, so, yeah. I think it's a a good little venue for a lot of people. This yeah, way. thank you. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, thanks again, Scott, for joining yeah. us. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next time on the Black Hills Small Business Podcast. I hope you enjoyed that story as much as we did. We'll put all the contact information of every business in the show notes or the description below. Be sure to check them out and support our local small businesses.